What's going on guys and welcome to Clairvoyance, the Heroes of the Storm show where we talk to various members of the community who are players and personalities. Today I am we are joined by uh, Idra and LZ Gamer of Team Snowflake and of course I'm here with my lovely co-host Sia Steve. So Sia Steve, how's it going man? It's pretty good man. Hyped to be back. It's been a while. Just back after PAX. So. It's, uh, it's good to get right back into the swing of things. Yeah, our last show was actually just me and you. We kind of talked about PAX East or PAX Prime, excuse me. But uh, today we're talking to Idra and LZ to hear their thoughts on competitive Heroes of the Storm. Uh, just kind of giving the giving them the spotlight, letting them talk a lot about the game. And we're going to pick their brains about various topics in the community. So um, let's start with LZ. Now, LZ, you have a, you have a long history um, of competitive gaming. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell people a little bit about your history? All right. Well, uh, let's see. I started competitive gaming back in... 1997, I think, or maybe it was even like maybe it was even six. To be honest, when I started playing StarCraft Brood War, um, and I played there for years and years um, competitively, and then StarCraft Two got picked up by Evil Geniuses, played with them for four years, and uh, yeah, and so here I am with my new love, Heroes of the Storm. And uh, Greg, how about yourself? Uh, kind of a similar story. I'm Greg Gitra Fields. I started back in Brood War as well. I don't remember what year, but I started playing it competitively when I was like 15. When I was 18, I moved to Korea and tried to play it professionally, and like technically did, but didn't really compete that much against the Koreans. Then StarCraft II came out, so I switched over and joined EG. Did that for probably about the same, three, four years. Um, pretty successfully, tournaments and stuff. And now I've switched over to Heroes. Nice. Now, you uh, use the term, my new love, Heroes of the Storm. Why did you guys choose to come to Heroes of the Storm over a game like Dota 2 or League of Legends? We'll start with you, Jake. Okay, um, I think this is a pretty easy one. Um, I've always been a, more of a Blizzard fan than any other game. Like, every game that I've ever played competitively has been Blizzard-based. And I just really like, you know, all their games, from the, the lore down to the heroes. So it just really um, interests me more than any other game. And plus it was like, um, you know, all the other games were really established and so it was like I was jumping into, like even if I wanted to play one of those games competitively, it was almost like I was a little minnow jumping into a giant, uh, a giant tank instead of being able to jump on it from a fresh start and, and, and grow with the game at, at a, uh, a good rate. So that's my reason. Yeah, I've actually played League and Dota for maybe a year and a half now, and I still follow Dota 2 a lot, and I, I, I really like the game. And if I were if I were 16 again, and I was like looking into getting pro gaming, that was like the entirety of my life, like it was back in Brood War, I think I would be playing Dota probably 100%. But it's the kind of game that takes that amount of dedication. And I'm going to school full-time, I mean, I'm 25 years old now. Like, there's other priorities as well. I, I intend to do Heroes competitively and attend tournaments and do what I can with it, but it's just... There's different aspects to the game that make it difficult. It's much more about teamwork and coordination. And also, like Jake said, it is a new game. So it's easier to get into that than trying to go back and compete with a bunch of people who've been playing it for the last, like, 10 years or something. So it's in the MOBA genre, which I think is really fun. And playing a team game is, like, a new challenge I'm really pretty excited about. But at the same time, it's also very accessible and doable and practical. Plus, I really, really like what they're doing with the game. Like, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into more of the meat of it, but just the best example I can think of is they added something as gigantic as artifacts, and they removed it a week later. And that amount of responsiveness and just, like, decision-making from the design team is really, really dramatic and really, really promising to me. So I'm kind of excited about where it's going. And I want to be aboard that train. Cool. Um, so you, you actually specifically said that Dota takes a long time to get into. Uh, Heroes has been kind of, it's basically been said that it has a lower skill floor. Um, so what, what do you think that translates to to people coming into the game? Do you think it's easier for them to get in, but it's still really hard to get to that top level? Is like, What have you seen in your experience between you two that kind of maybe backs that up or completely shatters that idea? I mean, that's a really complex question, actually, in part because, I mean, Dota is a game that has, what, a 10 plus year history, whereas we're in an alpha for about six months now. So, I mean, obviously a lot more has gone into developing that. There's more of a background you need to learn before you're anywhere near on par with the players who have been in it since the start. I wouldn't even compare Heroes to Dota, to be honest. I think they're completely different games. I think you can compare Heroes to League, and I think Heroes takes that comparison very well, especially for the different points that are in their development. Dota is, there's a lot more room for individual mechanics and 
you know, that, that level of play. But with League, like, I, I always see people say, you know, they remove CS from the game. That's going to make it really new friendly. Like, if you are a competitive player in League, you are going to get all of the farm that is available to you. The skill in it is finding ways to find that farm without, like, hurting your team in other ways. Same thing goes for Heroes. It's just it's experience instead of gold and experience, and there's other things going into it. So, like, everything on a competitive level, you can make plays on an individual level that is there, but that's in the background. Everything comes down to the teamwork, the decision making, the strategy, but particularly the teamwork and all of that. And all of that is right there in Heroes. Like, if the dev team keeps doing good things with it, if the game keeps progressing and growing, it can be easily as complex as League on that front. Plus, you have the whole other element of different maps, different objectives, all of that. There's a lot of room for growth there. I think that's actually the most exciting thing about the game. Like, if they release a robust map editor, the sky is the absolute limit. Now, actually, this segue right into that. Now, the maps in Heroes of the Storm is actually really what separates it from the other games, like you said. How do you feel about the, the size of the maps? Because, obviously, they're trying to stick to that 20, 25, 30-minute map game length. Um, but do you think the maps are the right size, too small? Because when StarCraft II first came out, um, we had maps like Steps of War. I mean, the maps were, like, <laughs> much, much smaller. And as the game went on, and we had more community-made maps, uh, the maps got bigger. And they... You know, they kind of reached a good healthy point where we saw a variety of map sizes. Do you think Heroes should have a similar approach? We have a, a, a variety of map sizes? Um, or do you think they should all be pretty standard sized? Um, you want to answer or should I? Um, yeah, I mean, I think variety is good. I mean, to be honest, I kind of like how Blizzard's doing it. You know, like uh, Garden of Terror is the newest map they came out with, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the first map they released since the, the alpha started. They're like, all right, well, this is another map we've been working on, right? And I actually really like they did it. it yeah, it, it has a lot of problems. Yes, it's not uh, perfectly balanced. It's not, it's not how we want it to be yet. But I do like that they're trying to see, like, let's see how the game plays out on a, on a larger scale, on a, on a bigger map, right? And so now we're at a point where it's, like, really hard to actually end games sometimes, and sometimes you almost have to, like, all in the palace just to try to end it, right? And so uh, I, I kind of like how they're, they're going about it. Um, and I would love to see all kinds of different maps really to pop up and just to see what fits the best, you know? I'm sure it won't be long before we have an absolute copy of the Dota map or the right. League of Legends map. It'll, it'll be out there so fast, right? But I'm, I'm really curious to how all these type of different maps actually play out in Heroes because, you know, like Greg said, it is a really different game. Like, it is a MOBA, but it's not at the same time. All right. Um, now, you, you talked right there about the game length and how um, Garden tends to extend the game. When, when we talk about Heroes, typically people say that it's a little bit faster and pretty much rightly so that the game is faster than a lot of its uh, other MOBA counterparts. How do you think that factors in with the map size? Like, should we be focusing on a, a certain amount to keep things kind of uniform, or do we have just free reign to have, like, maps that can end in 10 minutes or 6 minutes and maps that can end in, like, 30 and 40? What's, do you think that there should be a middle ground there, or just go kind of sky's the limit? I think the strongest point of Heroes is that Obviously, we're going to have to have a lower bound and an upper bound. You don't want hour-long games regularly, and you don't want five-minute-long games regularly. But I think you can have a window of anywhere from 10 to 40, and it's totally okay. Like That kind of diversity is really good. And it's very possible to do that in an interesting way, because there's so many different... Like We don't even know how many different variables there will be. We don't know how diverse the map editor will be. But the thing is, Garden of Terror kind of drags out, because A, it's the largest map. I'm pretty sure it's the largest map um, okay. that they've put out. And it also has a mechanic that is really, really weak early on. So it's very hard to actually make anything happen. If you put, like, if you just made the plant stronger, if you put DK on there or something, then there's a lot more ability to make things happen early, even though it is a big map. So there's lots of stuff they can tweak. They can find the right level of excitement to match length to all that. So I think the diversity is really good. And it's just something, like, like Jake said, we have to experiment with everything. And... You know, since it's going to be community driven, since they are putting out a map editor, that'll happen really, really quickly. And I think it'll be like uh, StarCraft 2, although much quicker because they seem more open to feedback now. It's like, it may start out kind of iffy, but we'll identify the problems, we'll find things that work better, and then those will become the norm. Um, right. compa comparing Heroes to StarCraft 2, how, how quick were they to respond to feedback? I mean, I, I followed the. I followed. <laughs> it's just laughs. <laughs> <laughs> respond to feedback. I, 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 think <laughs> that's, I think that's the uh, the proper response. But I mean, I followed the game. I, I watched State of the Game a lot back then. Um, I was completely awful at the game early on. But uh, it seemed like they did, but at a slower pace. Did they? I mean, was it non-existent? Was it really slow? Um, 
sorry about that. I probably just made a really loud noise. Uh, but, uh, like, what was it like compared to Heroes? I mean, they were aware of the feedback. There was a mailing list that had pro gamers on it. Some pro gamers may have gotten removed because they were excessively negative about their race. But they were looking for feedback from the competitive community. <laughs> Uh, but the stuff that was implemented, it felt like really, it basically felt like they were picking out the stuff that matched with their opinions, and those slowly, slowly changed over time, but it didn't feel like the pro gamers had any, to me at least, maybe some others did, it didn't feel like we had any real impact on the direction of the game, balance-wise, design-wise, like esports-wise, whereas with Heroes and Alpha, when they haven't even committed to an esports community, like there's already a lot more uh, direct interaction, they're looking for feedback from us, we can like just immediately see both the competitive community and just community in general, like I said, with the artifact thing, there are immediate changes that they implement just directly based off of our feedback. So I, I think they realized that they weren't very responsive in StarCraft 2 and that it upset a lot of people. And that's part of the reason they put it out, just straight enough. But they always emphasize that in interviews. This is the earliest they've released a game in the development process. Right. And they're trying to take advantage of the community's feedback for it. So they're actively looking for it and they are very obviously implementing it. Well, you know, they're doing a really good job listening to the community with that. Um, how do you feel the game is in terms of balance? Now, it's very early. We don't have that many heroes. And it's, it's a lot easier to balance a, a MOBA-style game than something like StarCraft II, where you have three races. But um, I, do you feel that are, there are any characters in the game that just need to be reworked? Do you feel that anybody's overpowered? Let's start with, like, characters that might be too strong. LZ? Um... Characters that might be too strong. I, I really don't know if there's a necessarily like too strong hero. I mean, Tychus comes to mind as far as like how much damage output he can do. You know, he's he's tanky. He has a dash to get away. Uh, there's really no negative side to him. There's no like in the competitive scene. There's no time you don't want a Tychus on your team. Like he fits in every composition. Um, uh, Arthas is another example. I would say is like if we're talking about the the two strongest heroes in the game, he would be my other one that I would put up there. Um, just because he, he has three forms of self-healing, which he, he needs, of course, right, to, to make him. But it's just, uh, it's really hard to deal with him. You know, the whole team has to work completely together to even eliminate him from the, the battlefield. And so, as far as that goes, I don't know if they even need tweaking. I actually just feel like they should probably just buff or give a, a couple other heroes, like, a couple better talents, you know, up the tree. And I actually think it would actually kind of mesh all, to, all like, really well, um, you know. Illidan, of course, is still overpowered. There they it is. Sorry. Right. Right. <laughs> I was waiting for he's, it. He's too strong. Uh, you can't run the way either, he man. just kills everyone and stuff. Man. He's so and good he's, at And he's so kind hearted because he never gives, gets the victory screen. You know, he always gives it away. <laughs> like, he wins the game, but then he lets the, other, the opponents have it. So, he's kind a very humble man. Very, very humble indeed. I, I think Stitches deserves to be in there. I think Arthas and Tychus, they're like very strong, but they're at a point where it would be okay to just bring everyone up to their level and have that be like what's accepted as balanced. I think that would actually be a good thing to do, just have everyone be powerful and cool and awesome. But then you get like stitches and a hook is already potentially game breaking, like anyone who's played a MOBA before in any any MOBA that I know of that has a hook hero. It's just it has the opportunity to completely turn a game. And then you give them Gorge, which is just additional silliness on top of that. And then you give them Sprint and Bolt too. Um, I don't know. Pretty much, I'd say like 90% of the time, if a lesser team beats a better team, Stitch is involved, is involved at this point, if the gap is big enough. I I think he should be reworked, at least in a little bit. Like, or like have his kit towed down or something. Like, he's he's not okay. And I think he's very unfun, which is the bigger problem. Like, it's not just that he's strong. It's just, if he gets a hook, well then, you're fighting 4v5 for however long. And there's just, there is counterplay, but it's relatively limited. And it's just so, so frustrating to have... One little mistake that could happen at any point, any time throughout the game, be so so game -like. So, so when you say he's unfun, you mean he's unfun to fight against? I don't know if it's even fun to play as. Like, I mean, people enjoy it, but it's not like you're doing something all that amazing. You're, you're sitting there and you're throwing out a hook every twelve seconds, and then eventually, if one hits the right target, then you just win the game. Uh, it, it's it doesn't seem exciting from either side to me. Now, do yeah, you? I can see where you're coming from with that. Good. Um, do you think okay. that they should maybe? try to make Putrid Bile more appealing um, rather than simply rework him, maybe tone, maybe cut half a second or a second off of his his, his devout or gorge rather um, and maybe rework Putrid Bile to make it a more viable option because right now it's not something that I, I don't remember the last time I saw it honestly 
I, I don't think it's terrible. I'm not sure if it's a matter of Gorgeous just too good to pass up, or it actually. I never play tanks at all, so I have very little first-hand experience with it. I'm not sure if it's a matter of Gorgeous just too good to pass up, or Putrid Bion really is undertuned. I think the better op option is take away some or all of his mobility. Like he, he, Hook plus Gorge is sufficient for him to be a good pick hero, especially if you build a team around it. You don't also need to be able to sprint and gorge away, and that creates all of the like you catch someone and you get behind a wall, which is probably the, like the worst part of it. Especially like that'll just drive away newbies. That happens to you and it just feels terrible, especially if you're inexperienced at the game. I think taking away the mobility would be a good way to start if they don't want to completely redesign his kit. And I'm sure they want to have a hook hero in it as like a staple part of MOBAs, so that's going to happen. I think it's just the mobility on top of it is too much. Yeah, one of the uh, things I suggested a while ago when this first came out was that, um, and I, I know Blizzard's like super trying to stay away from this, but uh, talent trees that actually have branches on them. So like if you take Gorge, then Sprint is locked and you can't actually take that or it gets replaced by something else in its place because of that exact uh, scenario. And I, I don't know how they would do it and going down the line, but it would be interesting to see if they decided to take that kind of path and see how complex it could make it. It's probably a sizable amount of work to balance everything, but yeah. it's better than where they're at right now. So, well, I mean, it could it actually makes balance easier in some ways because like you can limit what True. like you don't have to worry about every possible opportunity option lining up and which combinations are going to be overpowered. Hmm. That's true. Yeah, you can kind of direct the flow of the the game a little bit easier that way. But, um, but once you start doing that, it almost gets to the point where it's going to limit trees yeah. to the point where right. it's like okay he chose this talent this is how they're, he's building his character and it's gonna be very right. strange yeah. yeah so yeah i think uh it's for me it's like it's just little like like very obvious things that it doesn't have to be permanent either it's just like a kind of a placeholder thing until they figure out how to deal with it because so many people are up in arms about this exact situation there's but, other ways to get around that like just yeah. adding a built-in speed boost to putrid bio and you can scale it if you're worried it's gonna be overpowered at 10 or something and then you yeah. just take sprint out I think that would be. I think that would actually be a pretty good solution. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool. I, I used to run Bile too. I I love that so much, especially level I don't twenty. Mind it. It's here. like free executioner for all my yeah. ADCs, so I kind of like it. Yeah, we used to run uh, Void Prison and Bile like a long, long time ago, and basically you just Void Prison and then run around Bile while they're in there, and you <laughs> set it up so they can't leave. It was, a little ring of Bile. Right? Yeah, it was great. It was fun. Sounds sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's the ring around the rosy, basically. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a fun thing to deal with, but. So, in terms of, we, we covered your overpowered, or at least strong champions, is there anyone that you want to get buffed anytime soon that you think really needs it? Illidan? Cough? <laughs> Illidan! <laughs> yeah, uh, Illidan. Yeah, Illidan. So anyone that uh, doesn't know, just for the viewers, Illidan's actually the one here that they completely reworked. They remade him. He was really boring, and now they made him kind of... He wasn't that boring. I don't think he was boring. I, I thought he was awesome. awesome before. I thought he was okay. awesome. so he didn't feel like... He was boring Illidan. if you didn't understand, like, intricate mechanics with he the game. He was actually, like, the only hero that had, like, a, you know, a silence as a basic yeah. ability. It was awesome. Don't like, worry. Yeah. Sil was, Sylvanas like, will have that. Don't worry. I know. Um, I'll come back. She'll have the AoE silence. God, I can't wait for Sylvanas. But, Beast mode. So, but, yeah, now Illidan has been completely reworked, and ever since he's been reworked, he's been widely considered the worst hero in the game. I'm sorry, Tim. I know you love... Illidan, so squishy. He's so squishy. He's uh, would you consider him the worst? I mean, I think most people I think do. Worst. I put him down there. Yeah, he's, he's down there. He's he's probably the worst assassin. Yeah, oh, like, he's I, definitely. I would, I would say assassin. he's the worst. He's the worst yeah. assassin. I think Lily is worse than him, as far as like healers compared to all the other healers. Like, yeah. Lily just doesn't cut it. Um, especially now that everything knocks her out of her healing ultimate. <laughs> like, any know. kind of disruption makes her just like, oh, she dropped her little cloud, like yeah. raining cups down. Um. <laughs> Who else is really bad? Mur Murky's pretty bad. Murky's pretty bad. He's going like back and forth now because of the changes. People are yeah. still trying to play. Yeah. Nah, he's, he's still pretty bad. He's, he's, he's still, still he's not wor he's not comparable to like another whole champion. No, I don't think so, he is. Either. Um yeah. I think Murden's slowly oh, so, climbing out of the bottom, but yeah, like, he's still like, pretty low. Yeah, I feel so like Murden's there. close. Like Murden's like right there though, to being yeah. like really good, I feel like. Yeah. Um so yeah, I, I wouldn't say he's like even comparable, I feel like Murden's way better than an Illidan oh, as far yeah. as like kit and everything. For sure. So, do they just need number tweaks? Do they need reworks? Like, let's talk about Illidan. Like, what do they have to do to make Illidan? He's a paperweight that does no damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, he can't take a hit, and he can't deal enough damage fast enough to make him viable. Just to like jump in there, mess somebody up, and jump out. Um, the evasion is great and everything, but after two seconds of well, first off. 
uh, you can still die to abilities while you're evading basic attacks, right? Which is what usually happens in a 5v5 teamfight. Like, he's actually surprisingly amazing. Like, 101, like, if you put him in a lane versus a Vala, he'll mess that Vala up, right? But in when the team, you know, hits level 10 and everybody groups together, uh, Illidan is like like point three of a, an actual hero, I feel like, in a team fight because Uther does a, you know, a universal stun and he's just sitting there doing nothing and then he dies. Like, you don't mm -hmm. get to do anything. It doesn't matter if you hit all five people with metamorphosis and get, you know, the max amount of HP possible. You're still not as good as, like, any other assassin that would fill his role. So I, I, I would just say, like, he needs, like, number tweaks, like, severely. If he's going to play that type of that type of class and kit, what do you think would happen if they gave his evasion just flat, like basically RFG himself from the game, so like no abilities can hit him, no anything for that two second period? Do you think that would that would I mean, like possibly do something? Well, sure. Oh, yeah, it, it would make him broken. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for two over. seconds with cooldown reduction. Yeah. Okay. It might be a little too much. That's the problem with the way they made this Illidan. It's actually really hard to balance him because of his kit. Like he can chase anyone down. He has the 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 ability to like secure kills after your team already won a fight. Like if your team actually can win the four v five, Illidan can kill everyone else. Like he can he can chase the last three remaining people down very easily. Um, and so that's the reason he's like a really hard hero to actually balance. And so I I understand the reason the development team or whoever's having problems with with him because when they made his kit, he's actually like pretty hard to balance. So you know, it's a very fine line between balance and broken. Between never picked in a scrim or first picked, <laughs> pretty much. Huh. Yeah, it's basically old Arthas to new Arthas. Right. Yeah. Very true. Just give him the same buffs that they gave Arthas. He'll be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, they even, well, they kind of did. They gave him just flat lifesteal on his passive, but he doesn't do any damage, so it doesn't matter. Yep. Can't, yeah, you can't deal damage. <laughs> it's so silly. Oh, well. So, so overall, overall consensus is the game feels pretty balanced, pretty good. A lot of viable picks right now in terms of the, the various roles in the game. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I think it's pretty balanced. We need more assassins, but other than, well, like well, DPS heroes, but other than yeah. that, yeah. I think yeah. they're still the like most the... prominent class in the game, though. I think there's still more assassins than any other. I think that can't it's, be true. There's I think like it's tied. Supports. Yeah, this tied with supports right it now. It is tied. Okay, because they Plus, added three supports. Yeah. It's either tied or supports are up by like one. Plus the assassin title is basically not a character. Right. It's not actually an assassin. Yeah, the Zeratul isn't really. You know, it isn't really. Nova isn't really. Tassel well, Nova is actually basically is, an assassin. Just... Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, I know what I was going to say. When I talked to Dustin at um, at PAX, I was like, I asked him straight up, I was like, where are the mage characters? Like, <laughs> I like, we need casters. Like, I, where's the pure DPS? And he just looked at me and he had like, this huge smile on his face. He was like, we know. We've heard this feedback. It's coming. I was like, all right, thank you. Kill boss. I, I need Next, it. please. I know. Like, I, I need a casting DPS. It's just, it's got to happen, man. I mean, Asadar and Falstead basically are. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much as close to mages as you can get. I guess Nova too, but. She's yeah, I she totally is. But yeah, she. I mean, she is. Yeah. She's just. I mean, not Nova's a mage. She's just. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. just. She's not goes flat in like two seconds and has zero survivability. <laughs> Great, <laughs> super fun times. So we talked about best and worst heroes, and we have a few new heroes coming. Um, if you guys had to pick one, which is your most favorite that that you're most excited for, rather. Um, Chen. Uh, the, the Chen. That's oh, a yeah. first. Easily, easily. I, I mean, I like the the way he looks and i, I know i i know i've read and heard feedback <laughs> from cs steve over there but uh it, I, i've compared his numbers in the vod like he actually has more hp than a lot of the other like warrior classes at the moment so i mean i i agree he's probably not going to be able to stand up and survive tychus and vala shooting him but no one really can so yeah uh so. I, i'm still really looking forward to him he looks a lot of, like a lot of fun and It'll be even better once they have where you can uh, control his summons and splits and all that. Yeah. So that'd be really awesome. Is that the heroic you're looking forward to the most out of the two? It, I mean, I would probably rather that one, but I'm probably going to be using the, the barrel because it looks like it's probably better for competitive play at, yeah. at this stage of the game. I think it's I have to try it. I think, yeah. yeah the, we didn't get to see it, and I don't know if you heard me talk about it the other day, but um, the, the level 20 upgrade on barrel is absolutely absurd. It's actually nonsense. Like you could push someone from like second fort on haunted mines on like their side to your side. It's really? absurd. Yeah, like if you catch them on the wall and you go, it the upgrade when it was at PAX was it got um 
I think it was 300% movement speed increase. <laughs> so like it already moves pretty quick, and if you trap them right, you just punt them. And you just you just carry them away from the fight. You're like, we're done. And they're just they're gone. And it's like, uh, alright. Oh so my god. That's does wow. it, does it deal it damage? Works. It does a small amount of damage. Um so the way that it works is like uh how did I explain it last time, Jake? Do you remember? It's like a slinky. So like um you have like one end and the other, and then once once one like the, the barrel hits the target, it'll push it out a certain distance, and then it keeps doing that over and over. Um and it's it's just like it's hilarious to see and you can disrupt everything with it like oh my god it's so good i can't wait to see that that's probably what i'm actually looking forward to for shen week just to I see do. all the crazy play that comes out of that it sounds broken now i i assumed there would be some kind of like internal cooldown where he couldn't knock up or knock back the no same you girl. can like you can just here. go <laughs> okay and, well he's, he's gonna be really good now and he can't yeah. be knocked out of it you can't stun him he's like he's like uh yeah. diablo where he's using lightning yeah, it's unstoppable. He's, unstoppable yeah, yeah just, from what i could tell yeah that that was the case i, I never got hit by any like void I, void prison probably stops it but uh i never got hit by any like thing to knock him out of that so i i can't really vouch for it but man like that that one skill pretty much redeems him until like level 16 i guess um but it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how people play him. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Now, Greg, you said you don't really play tanks. Um, Anubarak looks a little bit different in the tanks. Are you interested in him at all? Eh, I don't know. I'm really bad at like melee warrior bruiser type. I just don't have any feel for it. I don't, I'm excited to have him on my team because he looks broken to sell. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not too excited to play him myself. I don't, if, if any of them, I'd have to pick Asmodan just because it's like range, damage, kind of magey. Mm -hmm. Apparently he has a super long range spell that uh, can like stack up damage uh, yeah, infinitely, which is kind of cool if it actually works well. He, just, he sounds kind of underwhelming. It doesn't seem like he's actually going to be that strong. But of the three, he's probably the one I would play the most, or more, be most likely to play. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> we say that uh, now. We say that now. But yeah. I, I, a lot of people said that about Zagara um, initially as well. So. Yeah. He does have the um, his stacking buff is his level one talent if you take it and uh, everything you every single thing you kill with his Q adds one damage to the ability. So like if you kill all seven minions in the wave with one Q, you get seven damage. That's actually good. I love that kind of thing. That's yeah. really good. Every it's time super I, team hard, hard, I take marksman, even though it's awful. Right. Does it, does it, I like playing marksman just to see the stacks, um, <laughs> but it, it's super hard to do it because you can't click on units in the game right now. So like. You're not really sure if you're going, and it's on a pretty long cooldown. So once you get used to it, it'll be fine. But it's man, it's it's tough doing it like the first time. You you think you're gonna get the kill on a creep, and it either dies before your spell hits, or it just doesn't matter. But he does have like the super long range talent that gives him like basically full graduating range on hammer with Q, and it does extra damage based on range from where you. Oh, throw wow. It. So oh, like if you fun. yeah if you stack your Q like to the high heaven or hell I guess for Asmodan, <laughs> and you um. And then you throw like the thing from forever away. You can just bombard buildings, like do crazy stuff with it. Yeah, we're doing that. That'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, <It'll> be fun. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Um, it, I, I think he'll probably be best on like uh, probably Curse Hollow because his summon is actually really cool too. You just pick a direction and it goes, and it'll, it'll stall tributes. It'll block people from ganking you. It's cool. It's, it's vision too. It's scouting. So yeah. th there's a lot yeah, of value awesome. in that. It, yeah. it sounds really interesting. Very unique. It's um, certain specialist. So before we, we, we jump away from characters uh, or heroes in the game, um, wish list. Any one hero you'd want to pick from StarCraft or WarCraft? I don't know if you guys are lore nerds at all. Um, is, there, is there something that you guys are uh, hoping to be added to the game sooner than later? Not at all, oh, I, will, I would like mages to be in the game. I always play like AP heroes in uh, League. Uh, Kael Kael'thas, I think he's the one who like became Invoker in like the Dota lore line. I yeah, think he was the core of that. So that that seems like a good bet. So maybe him, I guess. But no, not particularly. LZ, I mean, I mean, I always like mages too. I think that's what I'm most excited for too. I, I want you know like the uh, the elemental shaman. I want the I want Janna. Uh, you know, like a frost mage. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm excited for all those heroes too. I think that's probably where I'm most excited for. It'll add a whole nother layer to the game too once there's more mage type heroes to be put in you know like I think team comps and lineups will actually just kind of shift once they enter the game which would be really awesome yeah I mean we've seen Jaina in some of the videos casting Blizzard so yeah she's definitely going to be a frost mage we know Kael'thas is coming and uh, I assume Thrall will be an elemental shaman um, but yeah hopefully sooner than later we'll get them 
I hope Gul'dan comes in and uses his health as his ability, or as, like, <laughs> resource. Oh it's my like, God. kills himself. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of life tap stuff for Warlocks, and then they also have, like, drain life, so that would be really, really interesting to see. I could see him but, having Hellfire or something as well. Oh, uh, yeah, he'll have Hellfire, Soulburn, all that what good if stuff. He could, what if he could life tap and deny himself as he's about to die? <laughs> Oh my that would God. be cool. I miss I miss denies a lot. Like denying in Dota is probably the most gratifying feeling. Like it's like no, you can't. I have wonder this. why that doesn't exist here. Like I feel like I should be able to run into an ogre or something and let him kill me. Yeah, I don't. I mean, you could try. I mean, I think. <laughs> no, I have if, tried. It doesn't no, work. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's just like even if you just die without anyone seeing you in Heroes, it gives experience, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah that's weird. I don't know why it does that. But hey, you also get credit for kills when you're like a million miles away so <laughs> who knows fair enough <laughs> uh, so moving on uh, let's talk about competitive play a little bit because um i mean you guys are both from the starcraft 2 world i guess and you guys know wcs very well um there are other league formats like lcs and obviously there's just the free flow format that ti uses or valve uses for dota 2 where it's pretty much just community run stuff and then there's one big event at some point in the year um, what do you think is best for heroes? Because, I mean, we're seeing what they're doing right now for, I mean, StarCraft 2 is seeing big changes right now. Um, and right. for anyone that doesn't know, they're kind of region locking, um, everything finally. I don't think they're, do I didn't read into it too much. That's pretty much the gist of it, correct? Yeah, more or less. Just That's region. all I've heard from them. Yeah, it's just, lock. I don't know if there's anything yeah, else. you can't play outside of whatever region you're in. Yeah. Well, you have to have residency. So right. like if you get a visa or whatever, then you can play in another region. Right. Which makes sense. Um, yeah, you just can't travel and dominate yeah. something and then go home. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So, so Greg, what do you think they should do for heroes? Um, I mean, granted, we're still in the alpha. The competitive scene is very young. We don't have any like resources whatsoever for the game to be competitive. But once we get there, um, what would you like to see happen? Honestly, with the region locking, uh, WCS is about as close to perfect as I can think of. I, I really, 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 I don't think it's even a possibility. So there doesn't need to be too much talking about it, but. It, the international model, I think, is pretty terrible. It's awesome as a... It's not even awesome as a spectator, I don't know. It's really exciting because you have this one gigantic thing and there's so much money online and so much tension and it's awesome to watch for that like week or two. And then afterwards, like watching events, like I said, I like Dota a lot. I watch it pretty regularly. But it's just it's not exciting to watch it anymore because the international is done. And, like, I don't know. It just feels like the climax happened. You're ready to go to sleep. It's, uh, it's, it's like... It's just, yeah, it's kind of like football or something. Like the, It's the Super Bowl of of dota right but then after that normally it would take like a big break or something but it actually doesn't like esports never really rest so it just continues having tournaments but they actually just never live up to like the, the you know the invitational or whatever the international yeah. Yeah, so. plus it's it's not as good for the players and the teams and whatnot if you took all that money and all that support and you spread that out year round and put it into a league or something maybe you don't have that one amazingly awesome moment but you actually have steady income and players aren't just completely screwed if they don't end up qualifying or doing well at the main event and I don't know, just overall that's a pretty terrible model for esports um, it's more of just like a circle jerk or fan service for Valve than actually trying to support esports <laughs> so something in more along the LCS WCS lines and I prefer WCS just because it seems like they have a lot more room for anim amateur tournaments with their model which is very important right. like having the IEMs, having the Dream Hacks, having the MLGs those they were integral parts of StarCraft's development. I think it's really good to have them. Just its Monopolies are just inherently pretty bad. It's really nice to have, like we have all of these talented people, all of these tournament organizers and admins and established organizations who will probably want to do something with the game. It'd be really stupid not to take advantage of that. Plus, it's an outlet for amateurs. It doesn't mean like if, if you're locked out at LCS for the season, you don't qualify or whatever, you don't have to sit on your ass and do nothing. You can just go play an LG or an IM if you qualify for those. So year long or ongoing, uh, tournament with regular qualifications, room for amateur tournaments. Yeah, yeah, those are those are the important parts. Just room for amateurs, room for development, and the ongoing. LZ, would you agree? Yeah, I mean, I don't like the Dota system. Um, you know, I I don't know enough about the league system to really, uh, to really say how great it is or or how terrible it is or whatever. But I would say that the one thing I do really love about how the um, the league system worked or LCS is that they built stories around all their players and stuff really well. Like they made a they made a huge you know rivalries and everything from all the, these different things right from their league. And from WCS and like StarCraft, it didn't really happen that much right because it was like they played one day they lost that was it 
you didn't see them till like the next season of WCS, right? Because they lost in their their group or something to you know Jadon, right? And so and so no no story got told from that. It's just like oh the story was Koreans came, they kicked our butts, <laughs> and you know, we you know we're, we're sent home, and we're supposed to be a better gamer now because we played one best of three versus a Korean, and so and it just doesn't happen, right? And so that's the one thing I would say that if you know if Blizzard was going to to do something and really try to focus on improving, I would say just to make stories out of your event, you know, make stories out of your your league, which is something that I must say I think league has done better than any other organization. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody's going to follow you for that. Um, but I do think that there is a, a pretty significant difference between what basically could have been done with StarCraft 2 and what can be done in the MOBA community. Because StarCraft 2, you have so many 1v1s, like, there's just so many people that are, have their individual stuff, whereas here you have... You have the group persona for the team, and then you also have the individuals. Mm -hmm. So there, there's definitely a lot to work with in that regard. Like, oh, like C9 squaring up against Curse or something like that. And it's like, oh, th like this is a big thing. And you don't even really need to know who's on those teams. I guess you can kind of say, like, EG is going against, like, Liquid or something. But that's still right. not, that's not, it doesn't compare. Uh, right. And yeah, also, I definitely, get, I definitely want to see it. You get those other game crossovers. You get a guy like me that liked Liquid a lot. Um, you know, from just doing stuff with Smash and StarCraft 2. So when TI rolled around, you know, I'm rooting for Liquid just because I know the right. team. So you have a brand that spreads from game to game. Yeah. So there's a lot Absolutely. of benefits there for sure. But um, yeah. I mean, I, I agree with both of you on pretty much all your points. Yeah. I'm, I super support the amateur scene because I'm part of it and I love it. And storytelling is always good. That's why a lot of, uh, a lot of events now are run single limb because we were like, you know, you get your one shot, like, make it big, and then they'll they'll follow that team as far as they can. So, right. that's cool. Well, while we're talking about brands and teams, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about your team? Because you guys actually do have a Heroes of the Storm team. It's Team Snowflake. And uh, how did you guys all come together? I mean, obviously your team has a story. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so I started playing pretty much once I got access. I think I was like a week late to the alpha of Heroes of the Storm. And uh, I saw it, and I was like, wow, this game is really fun. Like, I really like this game. And I was like, but at first I was really skeptical. Like, oh, it's probably, you know, they took out last hitting. They took out all these things. It's probably not deep enough to have a competitive, uh, a competitive game, really. And the more I played, the more I, like, learned new things, right? Uh, Abathur was actually the first hero that I just, I played and played and played and played. And I was like, wow, you can do so many cool things with Abathur that actually is, like, you know, mechanically, right? Like, you could do from, from, uh, from camera hotkeys to to figuring ways to grab bribe stacks at three lanes at the same time, right? There's lots of different things that you could do. And so I, I learned that the more I played, that there was actually a really big depth to the game. And this is when we had custom games. <coughs> Steve, thanks for ruining our lives. Uh, Just so anyone watching knows, it's a, it's a running joke that, yeah, that he ruined joke, customs, but he did I'm not ruin serious. customs. Yes, he did, but that's beside the point. Uh, so... Um, so we, I would get together with a couple with some friends. I think it was um, Last Shadow and Nick and uh, I think Idra joined us a couple times and Shaggy and a few others. And we'd all just kind of do like a pickup game of, in custom games, right? Like you know, it'd be like backyard uh, where we just picked up you know random teams and we would just do draft. And it was it was a lot of fun. I was like, wow, this game is actually really cool. And the way like uh, the depth actually exists in this game. And so for, after that point, I really decided I wanted to take it serious. And so I, I grabbed some of the best players that I could that also felt the same way. They wanted to take it serious and, and really practice. And we and we put in like, you know, eight, ten hours. And then, you know, sooner or later, we just added a member and added a member and added a member. And then uh, we needed one more player. And then uh, I approached Greg because I, I noticed he played all the time, but I didn't actually know how serious he was going to be. And so I asked Greg if he wanted to, to be a part of the team. And, you know, we talked about it. And it pretty much uh, ended up to where he joined and uh you know, we practiced a lot, and it all kind of started to to feel right. You know, and we all kind of got more and more passion for the game, which I think is really important. You know, it's not like we're playing for the money because trust me, there isn't it isn't there yet. <laughs> yeah. It'll come in time. It, yeah, in time, maybe, hopefully. Uh, but it was really just because we were, we liked the game and, and we're competitive, right? Me and Greg known each other. We we're both on uh, Evil Geniuses and StarCraft uh, Two, and so that made us. Um, I also knew that. We weren't gonna like be flaky about the game. We're, we're gonna we're gonna take it serious, and so it's all it was always uh, reassuring. And then um, we had a couple of roster changes very recently, to where we picked up um, Faye, who uh, 
who uh, used to play on Nick's team, which I cannot think of the name of their team. Excelsior. Excelsior, right. And uh, she's one of like the absolute best like ADC type of players, and so we thought it'd be really good to have her a part of the team. And then uh, we also picked up uh, Liquid Chef because we've known him for about 10 years, and he was also taking the game really serious. And we, you know, just, you know what that person's made of, and you know how serious they're going to take it, and it's always good to have that good environment uh, in your team. And so that's yeah. kind of kind of how it happened and, and where we are currently. Cool. Well, thanks for taking us through that little journey. Um, so you mentioned that you guys were part of EG, and obviously we've, we've gone through the past and everything, and that you guys were StarCraft. Like, that that's where you kind of started and, and everything. So what's the difference between practicing StarCraft and practicing Heroes? Like, obviously, it's a 1v1 game, so that that aside, but, like, like what what do you guys go through on, like, a, a daily basis that you've had to switch up and kind of adapt, or, like, what have you carried over from your time playing StarCraft, and how do you practice Heroes? The go ahead, big, go ahead Greg. The biggest difference is, I'm not sure exactly how much it is how we practice, but just the whole team element and more the communication more than anything. Like like Jake said, we switched up a roster uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we weren't at all worried about the skill thing. Like, Chef was new to the game, but he's progressing really, really quickly. He has a great background in competitive gaming and stuff. We weren't worried about that. And Faye, like he said, one of the best players in the game. So we didn't think there would be any like real big drop-off, but what we didn't kind of take into account is Glaurung and Shaggy were probably the two most vocal players on the team. And even though Jake's the main shot caller, like half the time he would forget to make shot calls because you know he comes from a one-on-one -on -one game. We're all very like internal people. We don't talk a ton while we play. But Glaurung would just like be running his mouth and coming up with any possible thing, like always wanting to go ham. So half the time we actually made a decision, it would just be Jake being like, no, that's that's a bad idea. We should do this instead. So we lost that. So we had to like go back through and try and like re revamp, redesign. Everyone get comfortable with being much more talkative and different team dynamic and the chemistry and all that. So there's a whole bunch of different elements that you have to worry about beyond your actual just like how well you're actually doing the game. Like am I doing everything right? Yes. Okay, then am I doing everything I'm supposed to as part of the team? Am I doing like communicating with them properly, telling them everything they need to know, listening to everything that they're saying. So that's been by far the biggest change for me. Um, I don't know, what do we do differently practice wise? just because it's a team. I, mean, I would say it's, you know, it's not always one person's schedule. Sometimes you have to yeah. kind of, you know, make uh, sacrifices and changes for other people, you know, like uh, like Greg's in school, Kelax is in school, I think Chef's also in, in college. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so sometimes we have to work around a, a little schedule and, you know, sometimes we have to play a little bit later into the night than we'd want to. Uh, but it's all for the, the greater good and for, the, you know, what we're, we're achieving, which is just the best we can be, so. All right, sounds cool. Oh my goodness, you have an airplane taken off behind you? <laughs> Good lord. That's a souped up truck. So I don't know, people drag race outside or something. That's pretty <laughs> badass. Well, well, drag racing... <laughs> yeah, no drag racing. Um, but, alright, moving on. We can talk about what's coming forward, or what we can, what we know is, is coming up in the future. Coming forward is not the term. Um, so BlizzCon is the uh, the big the big guy that we're we're looking forward to in the future. It's it's this November, and uh, we know nothing about it. Uh, there is actually, I'm sure most of you guys have seen it. There's a BlizzCon. Um, it's the, the the live ticket for Directv uh, All Access Pass, and that has all the information. And if you read it, it says like free stream Expedition provided matches. for show. Yes, yeah, says all the Hearthstone tournament, StarCraft tournament, World of Warcraft tournament. And then Heroes of the Storm exhibition matches. Um, it does not say tournament. Um, I don't think anyone should be super surprised, considering how like we don't have any actual tools to run a tournament. I mean, we don't have a spectator client. We don't have custom games. We don't have any of that built into the game, so it's not a huge shocker. But um, what are you guys hoping to come out of it? Like, do you think they at least invite teams? What do you guys think they'll do at least? Yeah, the ideal is they fly out four of the best teams or four teams who won qualifiers or something along those lines and have them play a little tournament and the winner gets a trophy or some money or whatever. I think it's very, very unlikely that's happening at this point. The, the next step down is they fly out the two teams that they think are the best or the two highest draw teams that are actually good at the game and have an exhibition match between them. The worst case scenario is they have Team Husky against Team Artosis and we all <laughs> kill ourselves. 
I don't think that one's gonna <laughs> happen. I, I, I think they're in touch enough with the community that they're not gonna do that. But I, <laughs> at the end of the day, this is like it, it's a publicity thing for them. If they decide that's what's best to get the game out there, there is some value in that. And I mean, that's what they're gonna do. Then. Yeah. I think I think that would actually happen. be like a pretty big injustice on their part if they did oh, yeah. have that because you know they're like because a whole exhibition is to show what the game is like right and they're like this is what the game's like and it's like absolutely not even close <laughs> right like it, you know this is false advertising right so, exactly and so it's misleading to people it was like wow that game really sucks look how look how terrible they are you know like look you can't do anything in that game when in fact you can actually make all kinds of awesome like plays and stuff but. You're not going to get that out of you know spectator show matches or something, right? So it just depends on how Blizzard wants to do it. We're, like Greg said, you know, obviously we would love to to go and be part of BlizzCon or something, but it all just depends on what Blizzard is uh, plan for the, uh, the event is. Yeah, I think um, there's there's two ways that I look at it, and that if they're trying to draw the competitive crowd and the the less casual stuff, then obviously it makes sense to show a high, like a high end, you know, event. The, mm-hmm. Either a tournament or really high end exhibition matches between teams we all know that have already proven that they're really good. But at the same time, if they're still aiming for that, like, super broad base, then pulling in celebrities is obviously the way to go there. Like, there's so many people don't even know about this game as is that they're not even going to be sure what they're looking at in the first place, let alone, like, the high end people are going to realize that there's skill in the game. Like that's going to exist, but like the casual people that sit down and look at it and they're like, "Oh, we don't like we haven't really seen them over like there's so much stuff going on on the screen. What's happening?" Like if it's played at the pace that we play it at, it's it might I don't want to say confuse them, but they might not catch everything. Um, so so it, it's kind of a double-edged sword there for me. So maybe the perfect is the middle of the road where they invite wonderful celebrities like Town Hall <laughs> they're boys, <laughs> king of the hill, and all that stuff. Dual Q, everything no. Jake's involved with. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe that would be good though to have something where it's a mixture. That maybe they have a team that's just Husky, Artosis, Day Nine. Maybe that's one team, and then maybe they have a few pro teams, and then Town Hall. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with them doing like I'm okay with them doing like two things where they have like a high-end celebrity show match, like best of three, five, whatever, but they also have, like, a high-end community show match. Like, that would be cool for me. Like, I'm, I'm fine with that. Obviously, I would prefer a full-fledged tournament or just full community stuff, but if they absolutely feel like that celebrity match is necessary, then splitting half and half is fine by me. Hi, Kat. Okay. Um, well, I, I mean, is there anything else you want to see come out of BlizzCon? I mean, obviously we have our wish list. Obviously we want custom games and, and ranked play on ladder and stuff. But is there anything else you hope that, like, something in the back of your mind that you want to see come out of BlizzCon? It's a very open question, I know. <laughs> it is very open. I, I feel like a lot of the stuff that is really necessary is guaranteed to be coming. They've talked about the ladder comes down to some tweaking, like are they going to have a ranked solo queue and whatnot, but I mean, it's up for discussion. It's not like they're just totally unaware of something that needs to be in the game that we need to convince them to have. Um, I don't know, I can't think of too many like features that just need to be there. Okay. They need to be really focused on making it community oriented, because the game is just terrible for solo queue. And I mean, that's going to improve when you get a bigger player base and more general knowledge and higher skill and whatnot, but they just they need to do anything they possibly can to encourage people to group up and form like more than like even casual teams, just groups of people together who will actually communicate and not hate each other. Hmm. I'm not sure how to do that or like yeah. the best way to do I that. I mean, yeah. to be honest, a lot of the things that I want on my wish list is already things that Blizzard's already said they're coming out with, you know? Yeah. I'm just hoping this isn't like, you know, we're coming out with chat rooms and then it's like two years later we get chat rooms or something, right? <laughs> yeah, like from right. StarCraft days. But I'm, you know, I feel like they, there are very heavily invested into this game and um, and I feel like they're going to do it right. I really do feel like they're they're tr- going to try to do everything to the best they can and that they're they really are, you know, um, putting both feet into the water per se, right? And so I'm not too worried about it and I think that they're going to uh, they're going to surprise a lot of people and do this game a lot of justice and so yeah, everything that I want from BlizzCon is just to be there. And to win a coffee mug like Artosis did in Hearthstone. But besides that, <laughs> they win a I coffee any... mug. Did he? It was a trophy. Yeah, he. No, I'm pretty sure it was oh, like it a mug. Was it? Innkeeper. Yeah, really? Sure. 
I'm yeah. pretty sure it was a Hearthstone mug, right? He's always said yeah, that. It was, uh, I think it was like the goblet. It was like the goblet from Hearthstone. Like, like a, okay, a, goblet. I don't know. Sorry. It's a no, it, was like a, it was like a mug, but it was. It's a one of a kind mug. It's a one of a mug. It's a nice mug, but it's a mug. It's a inn. It's like an inn, a tavern mug. All right. Mugs aside. Yeah, the thing that I want is like I want replay and I want a uh, clan system. Like, clan system favorites. would be nice. I actually hadn't thought of that, but StarCraft has oh. that. So in theory, everything StarCraft has it's the same engine. It should be simple, I'd imagine, but who knows? Um, Matt, any final questions for him? Mm, I don't think so. I think we've gone through pretty much everything. All right, I have one. Um, All right. So if you can't answer this and you can't say anything, just say stay tuned or whatever. But <laughs> Snowflake isn't a team. I mean, it's it's your team, but it's not a brand. It's not it's not an organization. Um, obviously, you guys have a reputation behind you, and uh, we've seen a lot of teams like Empire, My Insanity, um, and I know there's more on the way coming to the community. Curse. Um, have you guys reached out? Have you been reached out to? Are you guys looking to join another organization? I mean, we have, both me and Jake came from EG, and Sheth came from Liquid, and of course we still like know people in those organization, organizations and talk to them, and every esports team is aware of Heroes and is watching very intently. They know it's going to be something big, they're just trying to figure out the opportune time and way to get into it. Um, but from the other side, it's, it's still an alpha. You get like a couple of hundred viewers if you're lucky on pretty much any stream involving the game that's not Blizzard like Blizzard endorsed. So like there's just no value in it right now, which means that teams who sign with teams, like if Snowflake were to sign with a team right now, we wouldn't really get anything out of it. There's just not the value there to sell to the teams. So I mean, it's unlikely we're going to be joining an organization anytime soon unless one of them gets dumb and offers us a lot of money that we aren't really worth yet. Um, I think it's just kind of too early for that. Like the game and the community need more time to develop. I love how unfiltered you are. You're just straightforward. Like, yeah, they're idiots if they give us money, but you can if you want. <laughs> We're open to it. That's, that's been Greg's selling pitch for years. It's worked too, so. <laughs> I like it. Don't, don't knock it. So the plan is to wait it out until the time is right and when it makes sense. Yeah, I'd say beta the earliest. I, am, I, just, I would love to see the contract for the cursed guys. I just I can't imagine how terrible it is. Shots fired. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Um, it's no, not even shots. It's just like, I mean, uh, they yeah, didn't have right. anything to lose, so you can't really blame them. You're right. You're right. Like, they're getting t-shirts, I'm sure. Hey, whatever, right? Hey, I mean, it's 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 branding for them, but it's, nice. getting, it's getting their name out there, so it's good for them for sure. I mean, if I got offered a contract with Curse, I would have taken it. I know that much. <laughs> because I don't have a reputation like you. <laughs> but... Awesome. Well, right. um, I think that pretty much covers our interview. It's been about an hour anyway, so we're pretty much out of time. Um, so why don't you guys give your final shout-outs and tell people where they can find you online. Start you with Greg. Start. Yeah. yeah, you guys start, start. with Greg. Okay. Follow me on Twitter at Idra. Uh That'll link you to pretty much anything else I do. I stream on MLG, MLG.tv slash Idra. It's usually scrims. I haven't been streaming as much recently. Class started up again. Plus, like I said, we, we mixed up our lineup. We've been trying to get everything back in gear and in line, winning form and whatnot. So I haven't been streaming quite as much. I'll try and do that again more. Um, but yeah, just follow me on Twitter. That'll link you to everything else I do. LZ? All right. Follow me on Twitter at LZ Gamer. Uh, follow my stream at LZ Gamer. TV at uh, Twitch TV, and uh, yeah, be sure to follow our team. We're playing in the ESV. We're also playing in the new upcoming. Um, oh, what's it called? HPL. Yeah. HPL. 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 Right. Heroes yeah. Pro HPL League. series, and uh, yeah. So there will be a lot more things to come with us, and so just be sure to follow us. And yeah, thanks for supporting. Well, thanks, cool. for thanks for having us on. Too. Yeah. 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 Thanks Thank for having for us on. There. Absolutely. All right, my Yep. Uh, <laughs> Steve, that's me, even though my name is Matt. So you can follow me at Steve on Twitter. Uh, pretty much anything else. If you want to find me, it's some version of Steve. So just Google it, and they're pretty much all the same. I'm also on Reddit. There at Steve as well. Uh, our Heroes of the Storm, come check it out. It's a pretty good place, I guess. Uh, we do a lot of stuff that talks about the game, and I need more people to talk about the game with me. So if you're on there talk and not just ask for invites to the alpha cool thanks for being on
Well, mine's pretty simple. If you're watching here on Twitch, please hit the follow button here on Twitch. My channel is very new, and I'm uh, going to be doing a lot of content here. Um, for YouTube, it's the same thing: Solid Jake GG on YouTube and Solid Jake GG on Twitter. Uh, make sure you tune in tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern for Town Hall. We have Dreadnought coming on from uh, Symbiote Gaming. Symbiote. Yeah, I, was, I almost said like Slayervoyant. I'm like Clairvoyance is the name of this show. Um, and so Town Hall is our weekly podcast where we it's more of a roundtable discussion between four people we talk about whatever's happening in the community um presently so it's going to be a, a lot of chen talk probably even though because it's chen week and um a lot of other stuff just the happenings between esc and the esv championship series and of course like you said we have hpl coming up and we have some announcements coming up soon uh we're doing two new tournaments uh well one's a more ongoing thing and one's going to be like a weekend tournament that's going to be run by Matt here and myself, and uh, we'll have the details for that very soon. We're going to be sending out the team invites, and that'll be happening in probably two or three weeks, but we'll let you guys know for sure when that's going down. But uh, thanks for tuning in to Clairvoyance number five, and uh, thanks for coming on again, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Appreciate thanks. it. Until next one. time. Take care.